Very big questions. Big questions we think we need to answer alone, but we don't. We've invented some really amazing things to try to help us answer these really big questions. That's what drugs are. Yeah. <laughs> drugs are amazing to try to answer the big question, aren't they? But right now, they're all illegal because there is a very pointless war on drugs going on. Yeah. I think it's holding us back as a goddamn species. I am for the legalization of all drugs. I'm also for, thank you, one person, everybody else is nervous. <laughs> I'm also for the education of all drugs. So get your notebooks out, classes in session. <laughs> psychedelics, that's the one I think we need to legalize right away. There's a lot more benefit than detriment to psychedelics, but those are the ones that have the most amount of stigma associated with them. The main one being, they're from the devil. <laughs> Marijuana, man, that's the devil's plant right there. Yeah. All right? Yeah. yeah. MDMA, devil's pill. <laughs> LSD, devil's paper. <laughs> Y'all know what that makes Jerry Garcia? The god dang devil, that's what. <laughs> no mortal man can go on tour for that long, all right? And 19 minute solos, that's selfish. That's some devil shit right there. <laughs> I find that stigma very funny because I'm an agnostic and I've done psychedelics and that's the only time I ever found evidence for God was when I did psychedelics. Yeah. So I think it's very funny that something that comes from the devil gets you that close to the bosom of God. <laughs> Interesting thought, ain't it? Yeah. Psilocybin mushrooms are known to decrease depression. Shrooms, by the way, are the only acceptable topping on a Pizza Hut pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but then you just realize, oh, there's like definitely better pizza out there, right? <laughs> Pure MDMA is a therapy aid, but the stigma towards MDMA is that not only is it dropping bodies, but it's dropping beat after beat after <laughs> beat. <laughs> But what they're talking about is Molly, right? The chemically altered version of MDMA. Kind of like how Pizza Hut pizza is just chemically altered pizza. <laughs> yeah, like it's edible, but your body's never gonna be the same again. <laughs> LSD not only decreases depression, but also suicidal thoughts. Holy shit, why wouldn't we legalize that, right? But the stigma towards LSD is that it gets stuck in your spinal cord and you'll have an acid flashback and remember that you went to a Dave Matthews Band concert once. <gasps> <laughs> That's not true. LSD metabolizes in your system in 48 hours, which is about half the time that it takes for a Pizza Hut pizza to metabolize in your system. <laughs> you are more likely to have a Pizza Hut flashback in your lifetime. That's the one I like, LSD. Yeah, that's the one I did. They got me some evidence for God. Yeah, I, I did LSD. I was happy for 16 straight hours, which is amazing, but so exhausting. <laughs> What's the last time anybody in here was happy for 16 straight minutes, let alone 16 hours? <laughs> the end of the show tonight, just go to the side of the street and just smile for 16 straight minutes. Somebody will put you in a padded room. <laughs> It's unnecessary behavior. <laughs> Even on your wedding day, you're not happy for 16 straight hours, right? And that's supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Bullshit. <laughs> the first day you do LSD, now that's the happiest day of your life. Yeah, the people that are laughing have done LSD. <laughs> what do you get on your wedding day? Maybe 23 straight minutes of happiness? Then you find out that Deborah's fucked up the flower arrangements and Lenny's trying to sleep with the groom's sister who happens to be Carl's wife. I gotta deal with all that shit. I think the last time I remember being happy for 16 straight hours was when I was a baby and I discovered that I had fingers. <laughs> guys know I could do this? <laughs> I feel so evolutionarily powerful! <laughs> Which is a thought you can't have unless you do LSD, by the way. <laughs> but the pharmaceutical industry does not believe that you can capitalize on happiness, because they don't want you doing our drugs. They want you doing their drugs. Yeah, the, they got some fancy drugs. 
Some of their drugs have a carboxyl group in it. <gasps> we don't know what's in our drugs because they won't fund the research to find out what's in our drugs. Shit, we might find out that there's two carboxyl groups in our drugs. Fuck, we might find out what a carboxyl group actually is. <laughs> or we find out that it's all from the devil. We don't know. But these pharmaceutical drugs are far more dangerous, right? They're way more chemically altered, and they're far more addictive. Go to any VA right now, and you will see more veterans addicted to oxycodone and Vicodin than you will LSD. Yeah. If you try to bring those veterans LSD, pharmaceutical industry will give you such a talking to. <laughs> Just, what do you think was going to happen, huh? Did you really think you could get these people pure joy and happiness and get them to see a spectrum of colors they would never see in their day-to-day -day life? This is bullshit, okay? These are American heroes, all right? They serve this country that technically this country forgot about, but that's not the point. What they need is this pill that we will provide to them that gives them the gift of such wonderful side effects, like temporary blindness, Okay, vomiting, the devil's breath, <laughs> bitch face, both resting and active, <laughs> anal leakage, that's what these people need. <laughs> Pharmaceutical industry is the only industry trying to make sickness sexy. Yeah, they want you to be sick. They need you to be sick, right? They tell you the way you are isn't normal, but if you take one of their pills, It'll get you close, and then people will want to have sex with you. <gasps> but the problem is, one of their pills is gonna give an erection for four minutes, let alone four hours. So now you gotta take another pill just to fuck somebody else that's also dead on the inside, right? It's like a vicious cycle they throw you into. It's like a snake trying to eat and fuck itself at the same time. Wait until everybody laughs at that joke. I'm very proud of that goddamn line. <laughs> My friend likes to call that the horror Boris, which I think is hilarious, right? It's the only pun in the show and I didn't even fucking write it. <laughs> but I do, man, I do think we need to legalize these drugs, right? Will it inherently make us a lot more peaceful of a society? We'd get rid of road rage. No be in their car, screaming at each other, honking, flipping each other off. You'll just be very excited that those very nice people turned on the very pretty lights in front of you. <laughs> There's a lot more benefit than detriment to psychedelics. Pure MDMA is a therapy aid, right? They use it for PTSD patients, for people that have gone through some trauma to help them cope and move forward with their lives, right? Uh, the guy that uh, invented the 12-step program, the 12-step AA program, yeah, he did LSD to quit alcohol. In fact, it worked so well, he wanted to do LSD to be the first step of the program. <laughs> How fucking awesome is that? If that's the first step of the program, I'm developing a drinking problem tomorrow. But I guess when you realize that we're all just one vibration floating through the universe and what we really need is a political party all based around loving and hugging each other a lot more, you don't need to drown your sorrows at the bottom of a beer bottle. Tip your bartenders tonight. That's very important. <laughs> Make sure you tip them well. <laughs> very important. <laughs> Drink because you're celebrating, not because you're sad. Right? right. Yeah. F psychedelics are just a tune-up for your brain. That's what they are. <laughs> They're the exact opposite of what a Pizza Hut pizza is to your stomach. <laughs> yeah. They get you more in tune with feelings of love, acceptance, and happiness. And a Pizza Hut pizza gets you more in tune with feelings of hate, anger, and diarrhea. <laughs> But the norm right now is to keep these things illegal, to do what the D.A.R.E. program and Nancy Reagan have told you to do. Just say no to opening your mind and to healing people and actually helping each other figure ourselves out because there ain't no fucking money in healing people. And when you figure yourself out, they can't convince you that you're sicker than what you already are because they can't make money off of healthy people. Right? Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And they're sure as shit not gonna educate you on how to do your drugs. And that's important. You need to be educated on how to do your drugs. Because it's just like drinking. The first time you started drinking, it was a goddamn disaster. <laughs> you threw up on your friend's cat. We didn't quit. Yeah, no, we did not. <laughs> then you went ahead and confessed your love to the house plant. You decided to move to Florida for fuck's sake. 
But then eventually you realize that 12 beers and 17 shots of vodka lead to really bad decisions, like couch peeing, dick drawings, and white privilege. <laughs> They're just bad ideas. Yeah. We need to be educated on how to do our drugs, because if we can do that, then maybe 16 hours of happiness can be the norm, right? The irony right now is we don't understand the things that can help us understand each other. And that's what I'm going to do. When I have kids, I'm going to help them understand each other. That's why I'm going to get them high. Okay. Start easy. Age five, let's do some weed. Okay. Makes you sleepy, not the life of the party. All right. Age six, bump of cocaine. <laughs> Shit, too much of the life of the party, right? You like it a little bit too much? All right, let's ease it back. Age seven, let's connect you to the universe. Let's drop some acid together. I bet they'll make a less shitty teenager, right? <laughs> yeah.